Hey everyone, hope you're doing well, enjoying some nice spring weather. This week we were once again in our series called Fakers, Breakers, and Makers. Have one more week after this one. Uh, we were again in Matthew, uh, the Gospel of Matthew this week, Matthew 18, verses 15 through 18. You can stop and read that as a group. Short text, but really, really good text. Two big ideas. Uh, the first one was that Jesus gives us a very clear process for resolving conflict. I know a lot of times we wish that the Bible was clearer on things, and this is actually one of those instances in which I think it works the other way, and the Bible is actually a little more clear than we would like it to be, uh, because it's kind of hard what Jesus teaches, but it's really clear and really direct. Second big idea is that churches should be places that are full of demand. There's a lot of demand in this text, but places that are even fuller of mercy, because there's a lot of mercy in this text too. Um, so first two questions, of course, the same ones each week. Number one, what was most interesting or encouraging to you this week? Second question, what was most challenging? What raised questions for you? What did you not understand or agree with? And that's totally fine. Question number three, how do you discern when to overlook a sin, which Solomon mentions the importance of doing sometimes in Proverbs 1911, and when you should confront a sin. So when somebody sins against you, and somebody is probably going to sin against you every single day, how do you discern, hey, I should probably just overlook this sin, or I probably need to confront them about this sin? Question four, this is something I want you to discuss that I said um, in the sermon. Matthew 18, this text, it cannot be used as a cover for bullying and or abuse. And sadly, it often is. Sometimes people in uh, really abusive, toxic relationships and the person in that relationship with them is like, hey, no, Jesus says you have to talk to me directly. You can't tell anybody else. And it's used to um, abuse and bully people. So we can't do that. But neither can we become too comfortable with just ignoring <clears throat> what Jesus says here about the first step in conflict resolution being going directly and discreetly to the person who has wronged you. And so how do you walk that line on making sure that we're wise about going directly and discreetly to others, but that we also don't use, um, basically that we also don't also just ignore what Jesus pretty clearly tells us to do, which is, hey, when you have conflict, first thing is you go to the person directly. Question number five, how do we work to make sure that our church, and then like a level down that your small group, that your family, are places that are both demanding but also merciful. How do we walk that tension? In a lot of ways, that's the most important tension <clears throat> that we walk as a church, that you walk as a small group. How do you make sure that you're both demanding but also merciful? Our action step was if you have conflict that you should overlook, then overlook it. Okay, quit holding on to it. If you've decided and you know in your heart you need to overlook something, then overlook it and quit holding on to it. If you have conflict with someone, however, that you should confront, then confront it biblically. Hope that makes for some good discussion and that you have enjoyed the series. And uh, see you guys and girls on Sunday.